may not make it. So um, this is uh, to help them. However, what I've seen, I'm glad that um, I think more than 15 have shown up, right? Like it's it's uh, that's pretty good. So Shun will have an exact count, but uh, I'm looking at it. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. So so it's it's pretty pretty uh, much higher than what I what I uh, originally uh, had response from all of you from. So that's pretty good and. Um, so I'm glad we are we are here. I'm going to go full screen, and uh, and we are uh, ready to go. So yeah, I'm going to kind of uh, start off in all these case studies. You have to um, read fairly deeply and also read uh, read in between the lines. And and if you are uh, familiar with the kind of uh, use case uh, that is being discussed. Uh, up here, um, I'll just give a synopsis of it. Um, you're you're certainly going to um, have have some uh, better uh, ways of thinking about it. If you have not had the experience, uh, my goal is to sort of uh, try to recreate the the uh, scene here. So basically, Sandy Platter. So although this uh, this is a very old case study, uh, it kind of completely brings out the way in which we can uh, approach um, user needs in general. So for a lot of you that don't have this kind of uh, exposure, this is going to be like a, like a good opening case. Uh, but also I should sort of warn you in some ways that the class ramps up uh, pretty much out of this type of uh, uh, simple setting. I mean, of course, it's not a simple setting in the real world, but sort of um, simplistic uh, setting in terms of the product. The product itself is, is not a car or not aircraft for which you oftentimes don't do totally new designs uh, every few months. You launch those types of products uh, maybe once in five years or six years. So new product design in the consumer uh, industry happens, uh, especially for simpler kind of things, happens um, you know at a faster rate and, and uh, uh, and uh, that's kind of the uh, scenario here. So, so the wilderness uh, theme. Uh, Sandy was on a vacation uh, in 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 uh, in the summer, and uh, so a lot of he and his backpackers they struggle with this uh, uh, water in general. And this is a big problem. Um, water purification continues to remain a big problem. Of course, um, you know water is also scarce, and we buy water today, but. Um, in those days, people never bought water. Uh, but if you went on camping and camping sites, as you would see in this case study, um, you will, you, you know, the kind of situations that they find themselves in are, are a lot of bacteria and a lot of other uh, types of protozoa. And these things uh, have gotten smaller and they continue to get smaller. So water filtration becomes a must in these types of uh, situations. Why? I guess... Uh, why is water filtration that important? Anybody want to chime in? Today more than others, other times, right? Like water filtration is sort of, purification has sort of become um, almost required in many, many parts. But why is that so uh, important? Okay. Prevents the spread of diseases. Yeah, and then water in general, right? Water in general is really important, like for life. Um, so diseases have uh, sort of gone up uh, in terms of what these protozoa and all that cause, but water is so important for life. So that's kind of become very fundamental. But also in this case, you see like felt, bacteria, um, and, and so on. So these types of things are there. Uh, in this particular case, if you kind of go in uh, platter shoes, you'll kind of see that that um, yes, some experience in in some uh, you know very different industry, but he's able to translate some of this industry. So he's translating uh, that, but also um, understanding customer needs and translating them to a product concept. Uh, that's very important to see. How do you sort of like not jump into the product ideas, but sort of look at needs at a very broad level and. Uh, 
And the so-called easy to use, that kind of keeps popping up. What does it mean, right? Everything we want should be easy to use, but at that state of technology, at the state that we are, what is easy to use is an important question to ask in almost any product development process, right? So kind of digging into that, peeling it up is important. And then how to then gradually transform them into more crisp things, because at the end of the day, you got to make something, right? You have to make those decisions. So how do you come up uh, with, with uh, uh, a gradual process so the design process, and there's no like one process, right? There are many ways you can approach, even as simple as a water filtration device, or uh, you know, it's 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 can it can be approached by multiple um, in multiple ways. And there are a lot of things that are good, a lot of things that can be bad. So there is better ways. It's not like there's one good way in design in general. Uh, there are better ways uh, in design. But also, as you know, from uh, what you have seen so far, we're kind of taking a broad stroke at design uh, in this class in general. It's not just the product, but also the design of the process that you use for designing products, uh, the design uh, of the product to fit the ecosystem. So, so what are the boundaries of it? Uh, how to design in, in a broader ecosystem? But also, more importantly, we sort of are talking about business model also as a design process. Okay, that's kind of very central uh, idea here uh, in, in the class and to some ex extent it's reflected in this case study but the rest of the class is kind of going to produce uh, proceed in a more um, I would say uh, in a sense that you know in time I have to say A before B we don't do business model design in parallel with a lot of other things we're going to talk about but in general a um, lot of these things happen in parallel of course during the early stage of design you're you're sort of uh, trying to home in on stuff, you know, home in on what stuff, right? And what is stuff? So it could be, it could be varying, but um, it sort of gives you that process angle here. So, so distinguishing among what is uh, more important, not so important, uh, structuring it, trying to make trade-offs, and then uh, generate a lot of concepts that kind of meet the target customer needs is kind of important. But also how they go about in this case. Uh, it turns out there are prior products in this case. Uh, in general, you'll find that in any design process, there's something prior to it, okay? Uh, people were using maps in a different way prior to Google. People were doing things differently, right? So uh, there's always something prior, and somehow people are satisfying some of their needs by those things. Of course, there are dramatic changes in terms of how you do things that can happen. Um, for, for instance, a smartphone dramatically changed a lot of different things. You know, it got rid of the camera, it got rid of maps, um, it got rid of um, uh, the, the GPS needs. Uh, it perhaps is getting rid of radar in some ways by using apps. So it was a platform there, right? So it changed a lot of things. Um, sort of like one of the most uh, important innovations that we all speak about today uh, for lack of other more important physical innovations. But uh, basically, we are going to start off here. So what I want to um, start raising now is I'm going to sort of like um, start raising things and uh, let you guys talk um, so you can you can uh, chime in and speak um, and and uh, and uh, we will want to listen to you. So first thing here is um, sort of let's let's sort of understand the user environment, right? Um, and and uh, also try to understand the uh, user in the user environment. So, so let's talk about the user in the in the user environment. Um, what are the types of people that? How many of you have done camping here? Maybe you can just send it in the chat button to everybody. Like, you know, have you done like uh, hiking, camping? Um, really, um, are you are you a hard a hardcore nut uh, that has done camping? Um, and or are you just a casual camper? Um, what kind of uh, places have you been on camping? So just type it in. I just want to see um, what all of you have done. Okay, once or twice a year. Uh, first time in many years this weekend. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> so just hiking, casual camper. Okay. I have had, we had students that have been to desert too. There's never have, that's fine. Yeah, maybe you will. <laughs> uh, and 
So, so that's good. So we have a few people uh, backpacking once, twice here. That's good, right? Like, yeah, so uh, so that, that's good. So, so we are seeing, I'm seeing about seven or eight. Uh, there are a few just hiking, but a few have uh, gone. Uh, mostly seem casual, um, no hardcore camping, right? Have people gone any hardcore wilderness camping, uh, not seen anyone else for a while or gone to a desert? <laughs> No one? Okay. All right. So I kind of have a feel for for um, what level you have been at. But let, let's sort of um, start start talking about um, users in general. So so who are uh, potential users of this type of filtering device, right? Like who, who are the people that, that uh, are likely to buy this? Nonprofits, NGOs. Okay. So, um, nonprofits. I mean, like you're talking of business to business, but let's talk about um, uh, single users that will, uh, at the end of the day, you know, use these type of devices. So, who, what, what are the nature of these type of people that that? Um, likely to purchase we, we purchase some for our company uh, some of our survey guys go out in the wilderness cool. for a couple you know a day or two so just as a backup we provide some form of filtration to them all right if uh, they were they were going to purchase themselves um what, what would be the nature of the people that would be buying this And what do they care about? In other words, basically, I'm asking you to describe um, people that you know are they are the are the end users that um, care about it. So I've seen a lot of adventure guides that they actually carry it. So they'll lead an adventure tour, and if someone's low on water and they're nearby, they'll just pump like water into like a water bottle for someone. Yeah, yeah, I'm seeing some comments, you know, talking about characteristics of the product. Uh, we're not talking about that now. Uh, some people are saying easy to use, low maintenance, lightweight gear. Uh, that's all good, but um, we want to talk about the user here. Who are they, right? To be after a, a natural disaster, like people need access to okay. clean water. Okay, that's good. Uh, disaster situations could be that's a that's an extreme. Uh, uh, that's another extreme kind of uh, uh, use case. Um, Alternative use cases besides, um, you know, where you where you where you really need it. Uh, but let's kind of talk about the the campers, right? Like, um, what, who who are they? And and so it says middle to upper income level individuals with a disposable income. That's cool. So that's kind of kind of the 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 uh, an important part here. Um, and and uh, um, and also uh, so there are few things. Let's you know so so. Middle to upper income level with a disposable. So, so basically, they they want to purchase. They have dollar to spend. Okay, uh, and and typically, like, um, what about other characteristics of them? Right? Are they kids? Uh, perhaps not. Right? Like, so so, uh, what else do we know about these type of people that are likely to buy such equipment? I mean, usually they're active, healthy, fit people. Yeah. Okay. So they are they are active, fit people. Uh, what else? Dollar to spend, active, fit, meaning like they are they 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 um yeah you know typically maybe younger um right and and obviously they want to go camping. They like outdoor stuff. Um, Young adults beginning their careers, uh, care about safety, young and active, okay, can be family groups, okay, all that is good. Uh, more more about more about um, more about them. Yeah, usually people like that are that into like hardcore camping or, or backpacking or adventure guides, they're really like gear monkeys where they like research the best gear and they always yes. want to have the best stuff. Good point. So they like to research, they they understand value. 
right? I'll, I'll kind of bring this value often. They like to research, dig in, okay? And they're talking to people. Um, what else? They're technically savvy, know a lot about their hobby. That's good, yeah. Oh, that's that's uh, any anything more about them. Okay, so I think I think that's kind of uh, good. Uh, we got we got some um, some ideas here, uh, and and many of them maybe even you right. They kind of talk to people, word of mouth. Um, you know, it's important, and and oftentimes they're also these days um, quite environmentally conscious as well. So that's kind of uh, also happening. They care about quality. Uh, they go after um, good stuff, right? So that's that's uh, part of it. Okay, so given that now. Um, I'm going to sort of like type that in. So I'm going to like move here. So I'm going to talk. So we talked about the user, right? Like so. So some of the things that we talked about is uh, outdoor. Right? Just putting things in place understand value and there were many other things said here um, just kind of pull that out chat window okay. tech savvy that was mentioned then uh, time available Interesting, yeah. And like and no hobby. That's good. Uh, okay. We'll just say that they are educated. Um, yeah. Well, I'm just going to say it's educated. Okay. But also remember, like I'm kind of avoiding a lot of other things that uh, you might have said intentionally, right? Because those are some of the things that uh, I'm hearing from you, you know, are, are actually product characteristics, right? Like we don't want to, we don't want to talk about it when you're really understanding the users. This is the easier use case, right? So it's sort of like, you know, and you've read it and some of it is very obvious to you, which are like things that an end product like this has to satisfy. But if you imagine if you were uh, in Platter's time or even before that, if you were at the time when that first filter and pocket, uh, uh, you know, both those earlier devices existed, if you were the very first one, then a lot of these things are not going to be obvious, right? Like now, now it's so many uh, years um, after, and, and uh, I actually just purchased this thing called Life Straw. By Vester Guard in a in a museum, um, you know it's it's kind of uh, selling selling uh, you know very, very a handheld small uh, small device. So you know things have changed so much now. Okay, so let's kind of move to the next uh, uh, important part. Um, so what I want to talk now is I'm going to sort of switch a little bit into uh, into the uh, into the environment. Okay. So, so I want to talk about the user environment. So I want to want you to imagine that you're camping and try to imagine that you're actually in the environment. So ideally for a lot of these um, products um, that happen, right? A lot of the people are people that really experience a problem or have, a, have been a part of it or they created something that uh, changed their view of the world. So they're sort of like really immersed in the situation. So if you have that level of experience, right, like uh, in terms of, of, of actually being a user, uh, you can actually probably, uh, and if you have the knowledge on the other side to, to create a solution, you're probably going to, going to have an advantage. Uh, sometimes you could have a disadvantage if your experiences as the user are not representative of a large number of users. But if they are, if you kind of get that um, understood well, uh, your chances that you home in on a on a product or service or some system that 
really hits it um, is is, uh, is is higher. Okay, so um, kind of trying to uh, be a bull before be, being a bullfighter. That's kind of the the theme there. So let's kind of talk about the environment. So uh, weren't we uh, weren't we describe the the environment? Okay, so if you have wandered away and done backpacking and done a lot of these things, right? Like uh, you know uh, what what have been your your uh, your experiences or uh, what do you think are the typical experiences that uh, uh, that somebody is going to have so that you can you know have a better uh, better understanding of the environment so what can us what what do users do in these type of environments what do they see uh, how is it uh, and and you know just imagine yourself walking perhaps uh, with a backpack and uh, what's the scene like there's no one answer, right? But I want you to kind of tell me the kinds of things that you would see in this kind of an environment. So um, from my experience, typically I'll be backpacking and we'll have like um, hydration bladders. And so we'll one of us will have a filtration pump. So we'll go hiking in. And then once we hit some water, we'll fill up our filtration, our hydration bags. And then once we fill them up, then we'll keep going. And we can be, we can be drawing water from typically like a lake or a river or a creek or something like that. All right. Yeah. So, so basically, I mean, you know, I mean, you can't carry a lot of water with you, right? So it's going to be heavy and so on and so forth. Uh, so you're going to be limited. So you're going to rely on external sources and typically like a lake or river. And um, you have some things that you carry with you in order to do that. Um, so purifying water to create a drinkable liquid is kind of crucial, right? So pretty much needed to survive. So you just have to, you have to do it. Um, what else can we talk about here? Well, in my experience, we've, um, we usually bring our, we have a life straw set as well. And we usually bring it whenever we go, you know, overseas or to a different country to, you know, just not to get sick from, you know, water that we're not used to. and. Mm -hmm it's kind of a different application for it, but we use it for that. Okay. Use what for that, please? Uh, like water filters. Water filters. Or um, okay, like a, a wipe straw. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So, so tell me a little bit more about it. Like what, what, what is, what are the, what are the um, uh, things that happen, you know, including, issues about things that you carry, where you go, what can happen to people, um, et cetera. So like, I guess in, in an example I can think of is last year we went to, um, I went to Nicaragua mm. and it, we had a, a life straw um, purifier and it kind of attached to our water bottles. And basically we just had it with us all the time and it's pretty small and portable and um, whenever we filled up water from like a water fountain or sink or something, we would just fill up the water purifier. So it was really just using it all the time. Right. Um, how many, how, what kind of distances did you, did, did, did you go and what do you think people typically do in these, uh, in these kind of, uh, trips? Well, for me, I think it was uh, like it, using it as, um, just because we were in a remote, um, different place with a different type of water, um, mm -hmm. that's why that's why we were using it. Um, as opposed to like normally, if, if you were living in one of these places, you you wouldn't wouldn't need one. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So this this um, and uh, I think. Uh, uh, Shitam has used like a UV water purifier in Afghanistan, uh, pretty compact, AAA batteries. Yeah, so um, it's interesting. So, so this is um, one of those ways of uh, killing bacteria. But um, and and so um, hot, humid, right, sunny. Uh, you could get exhausted. Um, oftentimes, you're also going in more elevated settings, right. Uh, 
and 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 you you you're also carrying stuff on you right all of these um, and and you want to acquire water on the way you can't carry too much and then of course the worst thing that can happen is you know you you um, get get an upset stomach so um any anything more like of the environment like uh, what what else you know, somebody mentioned lake uh, rivers right what else is uh, what what else kind of things do you do you likely likely to see in these um, Some plants can be water sources. Yeah, sure. So typically, like, uh, we'll we'll want it. We we'll take it out of a creek or out of a lake. Usually, we'll pump it into what our water bottles or into our hydration bladders. And so, usually, we need some kind of pump built into the filtration system. And right. most filtration systems require you to pump them, anyways, to use them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some comments like lack of electricity, of course. Yeah, and um, so so yeah so. So, so the sources themselves, right? Like, let's talk about like, you know, you talked about rivers. What else, um, you know, uh, can be sources and and uh, and and uh, uh, what what do you kind of think about the people, like the user in this kind of uh, environment, right? What 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 do you have uh, with you? What you don't have with you? Um, and and uh, you know, there can be a lot of other kinds of situations that you could be when you're you're looking for water, right? Any other comments? Yeah, you have to dig a well or find a spring, ice. Yeah, I mean, all of these are very true. So it can be streams, uh, it can be swampy, you know, you can, uh, and weather can be bad. Um, you have to carry food too, and there's uh, stuff with you, sleeping bags and uh, other camping equipment. So. So you, you you're you're sort of um, in a in a environment where things can not so conducive in in, in a in a very uh, general way to just make water easily, right? So um, let's kind of talk a little bit more about now we got the uh, other first two big chunks of things um, sort of understood a little bit. Um, best way is for you to go camping um, or deeper to get a feel for it. So what are the uh, circumstances, like kind of let's let's sort of uh, uh, get a more general description of uh, uh, what we call user needs. So I'm going to, uh, so just going to summarize the environment a little bit here. Oh, you guys already said a bunch of things, but let's just put it on paper like situations in Okay, given that, let's sort of like drive into more of the, what we call the, the user needs, right? Like, so, so what, what can we, what can we say about uh, user needs? Some of you sort of jumped into this early, so I want you to like pick this up now. Um, stopped at a campsite, you're hiking, okay. So, so what kinds of things can you be doing in these situations, right? So what will the user be likely doing? Um, you know, like what will be his condition uh, when accessing? So it can be like streams, water, maybe even puddles sometimes, ponds, lakes. Somebody mentioned ice, so it could be melting glaciers. 
right? So all of these things, right, are, are um, sources. Uh, what about the user himself? Two to four liters of water. Single user, I'm hearing a lot of things, okay. It's kind of weight, yeah. Pools water, okay, and there's something here. Uh, old spell in rough climates, compact, durable. Wow, this just like, I'm getting a lot of comments here. Okay, we we'll kind of get there uh, step by step. So the user themselves could be could be like uh, doing a bunch of things, right? I think one of you has unmuted. Okay, shouldn't call it. Okay, right. Um, so, so user itself can be in a different situation. You know, you have to kind of understand the user. It can be standing, whatever, right? Waiting, sitting, uh, having a backpack uh, while accessing the water. So, um, so it's not like a stable user environment. Like just you go and open a tap, you get water, right? Like it's like repeatable and <laughs> taps almost look similar. Maybe some are like you got to figure them out. Or these days you don't even have to do that. You just put your hand. So it's kind of like... You know, it's not a stable environment. It's going to be varying, um, and 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 furthermore, the user can be tired or fatigued, also, right? So, keeping that in mind, um, we have some of you chime in stuff. You know, somebody said uh, ergonomic. I'm going to just see them. Uh, what I'm hearing from you. And I heard uh, lost. Well, um, yeah, cost is an issue. Um, I'll just not use the word effective because, you know, sometimes, I mean, depending on, on what market and what you're selling and what the state of the market is, um, in this case, they figured out a gap in terms of cost and characteristics, and that was the target. They went after that. But that doesn't have to be. In fact, they set it up first because, uh, but on the other hand, you know, they also had like, uh, he had experience in um, ways of possibly filtering like air purification and so on and experiences with the silicon uh, tech, the tech industry. Um, so he kind of had a angle that he could go after that target price and cost. He found that gap, but that doesn't have to be, you know, if you're, in a in a in a segment that really um, you don't have to sell something for low cost, there's no other alternative. You'll sort of put it as high as possible, uh, very likely, until you get competitors and so on. So, cost is um, a, you know important, but like yeah, cost can be different. So lightweight. I'll just make comments here. Then uh, uh, it says different forms of water. That's cool. Uh, reliable. Um, somebody else said something interesting. I guess the user needs it to not taste bad. What did you say? Sorry. Um, good taste. Good taste. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Nice. Um, portability. All the ETs, portability, reliability, all of those things. Let me see what else. Uh, durable, heavy duty, rough climate, compact, durable, reusable. There was one. Okay.
Okay, so we'll just figure this out here. Um, Packable. Okay, it's kind of like compact. They are the same things. And then uh, um, simple usage. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And good for extreme softness. So it kind of put it as durable. Maybe that's yeah, extreme usage. Okay. Uh, long filter life, collapsible. Okay. Collapsible. I think that kind of maybe. Okay. So I'm hearing, hearing a lot of affordable maintenance. Okay. Maybe that's kind of. Few things I still haven't heard from you. I want to I want to hear more about a um, few other things that um, are important here. Um, ah, that's good. So that's fast filtering. I'll call it rate of filtering. Okay, and other other things. Mm. Work need to filter volume capability. Wait, wait, wait. This is cool. Uh, water input versus output. Okay. So, so um, those are all good. Less effort. Okay. So I'm getting a whole bunch of things. Input. Ah, uh, shouldn't clog easily, of course. Uh, should not clog. Okay. One important thing, like, why are you purchasing the filter, right? What should it do? <laughs> it should filter, right? Filter what? Uh, maybe you mentioned this, but I need a compact way of... That's you know, the most important thing. If it doesn't do that, there's no need to... No need to talk about this case study, right? Like, so what What? What do you call that? Oh yeah, removing bacteria, filter bacteria, okay. Remove, uh, remove, rem uh, effect, so I'll kind of call it effective, okay. Uh, and then remove what? What is important? And this is kind of um, bacteria, parasites, chemicals, but also uh, contaminants and impurities, okay? Because they can be even as large as a leaf, right? So it's the size, so this thing is kind of like really important, right? The size of stuff. I'll just put a question mark there, but that's something that you want to think about because that's kind of changed over time and, and it's changed devices or things change over time, okay? For anything, you kind of got to watch, like you do something today, uh, environment has changed and you need a new thing. And that's when you have new companies figure that out and they start up. That's why all these guys like Microsoft and Google and all, they keep buying companies after companies after companies. You know, why would they do that? Because stuff changes. And if stuff changes and there's other things that can help you design and build and um, make something better, uh, that's good, right? Uh, that's that's kind of what's happening, like Amazon buying this robotics company called Canvas and, you know, all of these things. Google bought a lot of companies like Boston Dynamics and, and they divested it because they never um, thought about, like, it's, it's not going to, it's not going to help them and they decided their strategy was different, they got out of that market, but that happens all the time. Um, stuff don't, Products 
we'll have to keep uh, innovating uh, and, and that that is you know not going to stop it's, it's going to keep changing okay. okay so we kind of got a bunch of stuff here um, any anything that you think I've left out Maintenance, I think I'll kind of break it up. Uh, need to be able to source it where I can buy. That's kind of important. Yeah, I, I like that point because, you know, I think I think, I think think today, I mean, when those guys were doing it, there was barely any internet, right? Today, that becomes even more important. Um, okay, I'll just put it source instead of whatever, right? Okay. Easy to clean. Cool. Okay, I thought I had it, but you guys didn't give me time for that. Cool. Okay, I think I think we kind of touched upon everything now. So I'm going to ask you a little bit. Um, different question now. Um, Kind of hit upon most of these things. So rajadness, e, you know, it sort of does not break. Um, there's one thing I don't see here explicitly. Yeah, it's the takes good. Uh, that's one important thing. Uh, if there's not much for you to choose from, probably not important. But yeah, I mean, you know, it's a differentiator. Um, when you say easy to clean after use and all that, right? Like, well, what is what is you know like what happens when you when you got to got to do something with it? You know, it's it's uh, is it fixable, etc. Right? Like, is it one piece this device? If it's one piece, that's really cool. Um, it's all done, right? But what happens when stuff you have to design and build can't be made in one piece? Yeah, repair. What do you need to do for repairing? Parts. Yeah, you got to open things up. What is that process called? Yeah, cool. Disassemblable or assemble, right? Okay, so I'm just going to put that in. Assemblability. Just made that word up. Maybe it exists in the dictionary. I don't know. But um, disassemble and assemble exist. I just made it an ET there. Okay, anything else? I think we are good. There's nothing dramatically new that's showing up. There, there could be some interesting things that uh, could be like, you know, help the user, but um, I think we'll come at it later. So, so it has to guarantee filtering of bacteria, protozoa, and then we talked about this rate, adequate volume and rate of, uh, and then, uh, assemblability, disassemblability, that kind of a thinking, okay, and and uh, compactness, rigidness does not fall and break. All of those are uh, those are all important. Okay, this is good. Now, what next? You got a whole bunch of things. So this kind of stuff is going to happen in the real world. Like you're going to kind of go and you know you're going to first collect stuff that bring everything from different places and put it in one place, right? Like put it there, put it in your team. And oftentimes these things get understood by different people in the team, right? It's, it's like a like a aircraft design, right? Who knows how to design and build and make an aircraft? It's a whole bunch of machines and teams and, and knowledge is held together in large teams often. So, um, so when you gather all of this stuff, what next? Ask again, what next? So, so yeah, okay. Um, time to, well, not time to design the product. No, I don't agree with that. Identify core requirements. Yeah, I kind of think that might be, there's something else that has to be done before. Well, yeah, that's part of it. Prioritize, that's cool. Create a hierarchy of requirements. I, I like that, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with that, okay. 
uh, I'm going to go with that. That's kind of like capturing my next steps. Um, so, so, so kind of, I'll, I will not even say hierarchy. I will say like before you can hierarchicalize, I mean, few metrics, oh, that's all later. Don't worry about it. That's a tool, right? We want to use our, um, yeah, there are tools here too. But this is a tool that I recommend at this stage. Um, this tool is called a post-it note. Okay, I, I kind of would put it as a tool here. Uh, why would I kind of say that's a tool now? It's it's because I can write a single thing in each post-it note and I, and all this it is and taste and portable, compact, uh, all of these I'll put it on post-it notes and everybody will put it on post-it notes. So I have like seven people, each one came up with five or 10. It will put it all on a wall or whatever. And, and, and also what it does help and, and uh, you know, is, is if you put it on a wall, uh, people can move around it. If it's a single post-it note, it's only useful for you. You can't do anything with it, right? Uh, if you want a bunch of people to see some things, you'll go put it on charts or put it on a wall and spread it around. Um, there's a reason why post-it note is post-it note size, the reason why you put it on a chart. And these days you get these large post-it note size of charts. So I would kind of get like five or 10 of them, stick it on the wall in the room, and then like take your post-it note and put it on the wall. Somebody said affinity diagram. It's kind of where we are going, but like it's kind of jumping there. So I want to kind of get at it, there, right? Like, so, so what is it? So I put it on. And then um, what we will do is, you know, before you can hierarchicalize, like somebody said it, and identify core requirements, somebody else said that, uh, I'm kind of going to group it, okay? So um, just group it, right? So to group it, what I would do is, um, well, easier way on, on PowerPoint, is PowerPoint is too restrictive. Um, I can't move things that easily. Uh, unless I created each of these bullet items separately. Right now I have three groups, but they are the not, not the natural group. So what I would do is we can just color it or whatever, right? Um, um, not necessary all this brainstorming, SWOT, all that. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. Maybe you brainstorm memes, but yeah, I mean, that's that's fine. So, so basically we just group it. So how to group it? What are the groups? Uh, maybe easy to use is one group, okay? So um, who all fits in the easy to group kind of a thinking, right? Functionality, right? Okay, that's cool. Economy, performance, aesthetics. Yeah, those are all good, good, uh, good words for for grouping, and um, and we would do that, and and then like let's sort of uh, so easy to carry, compact maintainability, all of these things, right? Like kind of just uh, uh, come up with some group names. And there's, like I said, no one. Yeah, some, so the taxonomy is commonly understood by everybody. And we agree upon it because we all know that is good. Uh, and then we, 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 uh, we kind of want to group it. So um, I'm kind of going to assume that you will be able to help doing that. Um, Okay, so, and then, and then we can break it further up. So, to some level, um, I want to sort of set you up for a little bit of uh, grouping kind of a thing. And <clears throat> one way to think about it is, is, um, is, is this idea of prioritization and grouping, right? We, we, we talked about it. Um, and we talked about this hierarchy thing. So, so clearly, like we, we discussed earlier, um, you know, we, we always had this core requirements, right? Core, like without that, there's no filter. So we can always say that, well, in general, after coming up with these um, bigger chunks, some of, some of these are like absolute needs. We can't, we can't do anything without that. They are required for the product, right? That's the only reason we are, we are designing a product um, and and um, and then you sort of say, okay, let's uh, think about these things and let's group it and stratify it and and bring it into into chunks. 
So, so it must filter bacteria and dirt and, you know, must not break. Uh, it shouldn't fall. It shouldn't. Um, and, 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 and more importantly, um, another important thing, we kind of had it, but maybe not explicitly. We kind of didn't say that, you know, so we have something called a hand, right? So finally, it's the hand that is going to be using this thing, right? How many hands are going to use it? Two. Okay, cool. So two hands. That's it. Not two people, right? This thing is not like unless you have this, this giant filter, one guy holding the back end, and you're going, to, then you're not going to be able to carry. So there's a reason for size of things. There's a reason why. You know, paper is 8 and by 11. There's a reason why pens are of that size. There's a reason why boards are of that size, etc. right? So the reason for size of everything, um, the reason why cars are that wide also, well, that's a different story. Um, we can talk about it later. But um, so two hands and what's one hand going to do? What's the other going to do? That's kind of got a, got a wall, but in general, um, we sort of have to think about it too, right? Okay, so we, we kind of uh, understand there are some things that are more important than the others. So kind of to group this, um, I've kind of put it in this kind of a quad chart here. Uh, and and uh, the idea of this chart is that uh, on the y-axis, we have customer satisfaction, here I have fulfillment of need. So um, like right at the center here is, is uh, the zero. Right, like basically, what we are saying is is uh, um, is is the the side is negative, negative, right? So so we're kind of saying that uh, there are some things that as you fulfill the need uh, more, the customer is more satisfied. It kind of goes like that. And if the and and if you don't fulfill that need, the customer is it's kind of like you know very very sort of linear, okay. And, and uh, so we can call this linear satisfiers. Okay, that's kind of a word that is often used. Um, maybe we, we, uh... so, so one way to stratify and group these, uh, these needs are to break it up into chunks. So these are like the linear ones. And then um, somebody earlier said, must-haves. Um, I'm kind of going to put the must-haves like like this, right? And and there's no absolute uh, truth to this kind of uh, drawing, but you know it's it's a it's a good thing to draw to try to like understand them better. Okay. Kind of going here. Okay. And and there is stuff that you can say like. If it's fulfilled or you know not fulfilled, uh, customer satisfaction is just going to be zero all the time. So, is there a word that you can come up for saying what that is? Like it's just like flat. I don't care whether you give that to me or don't give it to me. Um, it's the same deal. Anyone want to come? Yeah, cool. Somebody has heard this. So I'm kind of indifferent, right? I don't care. Okay, so that's kind of sitting there, right? And and then we'll draw this up here uh, in this way. This is sort of, I'm just going to put it that way. Like, oh, if I have it, and I'm going to like jump out of my seat. Okay, so what can we call that? And maybe maybe you didn't didn't touch this on our needs, like because we didn't think about it in that way. But let's say that um, you know you had that. You're gonna you're gonna be oh yeah something like luxury. Yeah yeah, that's kind of like. Yeah, so what, but what do luxury items have that make you, like, 
oh, you're, oh man, this is cool. So maybe we'll just call it. So the word that people use in product design, like maybe delighters, right? Like uh, oftentimes, as somebody put it, like luxury items kind of have something extra, exclusive, right? Yeah, all those things. So they have that, right? And typically you have this in cars too, right? It first comes in the luxury cars, but then you start finding it in the regular cars too pretty soon. It, these days, these things go down quickly. Um, you know, you have, you have all these cool things coming in the really expensive, and they actually show up in race cars first and, and you know, premium. But the premium becomes expected in time in many situations. Like you just expect it. Uh, it becomes part of it. And sometimes they vanish. Like in smartphones, a lot of the features that were in individual products like radio, now you have internet radio, radio is gone, camera is gone, and all the buttons are gone. And, you know, you just convert into apps and somebody writes apps for it and you pay like five bucks and, and you get all the features, right? Um, yeah, I do have a tablet now with me, but the notebooks haven't gone, although I'm buying the tablet more for the notebook app than the tablet. Sometimes like people buy stuff for the apps that run on it. Without the apps, there's nothing. Okay, so so much, just, I, I kind of use the phone because it sort of happened, well, many of you may not know that. <laughs> there was no, uh, there was no smartphone a while ago. It wasn't too long ago, uh, but now you have, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars industry built on Built on that, in the early days of apps, people make, students made like forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 by writing cool apps. Um, but in, in any case, we'll sort of move back to the water filter. Um, so, yeah, so linear, what is kind of like must have, what is linear? What is, let's talk about just must have, just give me like must have, just among the things that we had there, right? Reminded what we had there, kind of had it, had all of this. Which of these are must haves? I should filter effective. Effective, yeah, okay, maybe yeah, some of it is, um, you know, depending on your um, reliable, yeah, more, more reliable, less reliable, yeah, okay. So, so. So some of it, I may argue that it's more like must filter is must have, you know, some of it um, like lightweight, I might, I might put it like, yeah, I guess, you know, linear, you can't fully separate some of these things sometimes, but um, you know, effectiveness, co co compactness, uh, some of these, you know, quick um, cost, you know, like a lot of these could be, some of it could be linear and some of it should not clog. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so rate of clock, you know, so yeah, okay, definitely. Okay, so we kind of, like, yeah, I think I think it will be a debate on on what is really must and what is really linear, but I would say some things are more linear than more must, okay. Um, so what is, uh, okay, we had that, you know, do you, do you have some things which users might be indifferent to? Maybe if, if it's a first or third filter and you don't have much, competition, there are a bunch of characteristics that you can rewind in time and say, hey, you know, nobody's going to care about it. Yeah, aesthetics, color, probably, yeah, all of those. Um, what about something like, do you have anything indifferent? Or what about delighters? Those are interesting to talk about. Taste, okay. Well, taste, yeah. I think taste people have gone away from all this iodine and all that stuff. Like I think you know they size, yeah, size ergonomics. Also, I would I would say that they are sort of like linear, aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, I think yeah, okay, yeah. So so I mean I I would say they are like linear stuff. Uh, what is what is a delighter? Really lightweight, okay. <laughs> you can put it in your pocket and walk, sure. <laughs> That'll be cool. And it does all the other things too. Um, yeah. Cheap also, yeah, okay. I mean, like, yeah, okay. 
linear. So what is like, yeah, so, so lots of water. Yeah, I mean, there can be something which kind of are extreme, which could delight you. Like you didn't expect it to do that well. Um, yeah, I would think like if something sort of told me like, you know, cars, oh, um, you're ready for maintenance or, oh, you need to put gas, um, you know, 20 miles. Those are all like features that are in cars now and they maybe even talk to you, right? Um, never repurchase, uh, makes taste like, yeah, okay. Something is not a requirement in design, comforting, like seat warmers. Yeah, yeah, those things. Well, yeah, these days people expect seat warmers, but yeah, so delighter could be like an indicator, for instance, I use that as a way to say, oh, it, it kind of knows that. And I think the, the water filters for home also have that, they don't tell you when to replace and so on. So it's kind of uh, interesting. Okay, so let's kind of uh, move beyond that. Um, so things like costs uh, less, purifies more water, between cleanings, filter replacement, purify water faster, waste less, takes less space. All those I'll put in the linear, okay. Um, and and uh, oh, somebody said serves multiple purposes, maybe a purifier and tester. Okay. Well, anyway, okay. So, uh, and then and then like. Uh, yeah, simplicity, discipline, could all those things could also be like, yeah, delighters in some cases. Uh, simple, like instructions are really easy to use. And then, you know, being able to use it in different situations, like streams, portals, you know, all of that. Uh, some warning feature could be a delighter. Uh, other thing could be, this is something that hasn't come out that much. Perhaps we don't have too many... Um, well, tells composition of water. Yeah, I think that's that's a cool thing. Yeah, I think that's that's a delighter. It, it's it's yeah, that's really cool. That may not even be needed for a when for regular water, like for cities and all, right? There's all these sudden lawsuits. Uh, I mean, like things are happening in cities. Whole cities are like I think it happened in New Jersey just a few weeks ago. Um, people were given like regular like water because the city officials became scared uh, of what might happen in Michigan that. You know, so I think, yeah, getting water composition accurately, I, w I wouldn't mind having it even in my regular um, drinking water taps, right? That'll be cool. Um, maybe that's a product idea for one of you next time. If you are really good at uh, working with somebody who understands water sensing, that may be a cool product. Um, but yeah, kind of moving further um, that that we, we sort of have, um, have this, right? Like uh, understand what is less important, what is neutral, uh, et cetera. And it's not a hard, fast thing. And, and in many cases, you know, a lot of um, experienced design design teams, they kind of get all this, they know it. They don't talk about it in the form that we do because it sort of happens more or less naturally, but it's uh, important to bring it and make it more explicit because all the people in the teams don't have the same understanding sometimes. You know, marketing will say something, the tech guy will say something, uh, and then this guy will say, oh, yeah, you know, I saw this happen there. So it's important to um, associate words and taxonomies to each one and describe them so everybody's literally on the same page. So this this metaphor of being on the same page is easy to say, right? It's These are all hard things to do. And, and big, large companies have seen this. They start somewhere and they end up producing something, and, and then, like, really nobody wants to they, the people will tell you all kinds of things but you ask them to pay for that price and then they'll not pay for the price that's when you really find out that oh people don't want it right that's something not so um not so great for me but you know like when i'm really asked to open the wallet and pay for it is when you really know that you have customers and if you can really do that um that's cool okay that's kind of where we're going to um, end up this class around with uh, not not today, but in general Okay, so Let's dive deeper um, We are kind of like I have to finish pretty soon. So I'm going to um, dive a little deeper um, Diving deeper meaning like we're going to chat a little bit about how do I figure out? How do how do I like understand the, the thing deeper in terms of of um, the filter in terms of uh, either to use Right, let's say easy to use, right? So, so I have to grip it with my hands. But then 
Um, I have only two hands. We already discussed this. And I may be bending, standing, or kneeling, right? All of those things happen. So I have to take it out quickly out of the backpack, put it out, and uh, the other side should drop into the water. Um, I, don't, I shouldn't have to have, be that strong to use it also. Uh, and then it should like quickly clean, no matter whether it's a stream or puddle, right? Like, so how do I sort of think about it, right? That's one, one important thing. So it's kind of like translating easy to use to um, what would the user want to be easy, right? What is the detail uh, aspects of, of uh, how you're going to use the pump that affect uh, how easy to use it is? Uh, so let's kind of just talk about one thing and then, and then I'm going to sort of suggest that you guys are smart enough that you can extend it to others. So kind of let's talk about the size. So what's the impact of the size? I have to hold it with my hand got to do with a lot of other aspects of uh, easy to use. Circles are good. I mean, you know, nobody makes things which are like maybe square and so on for filtering. Um, there's a reason why things are made circular. Um, but anyway, so sort of like I'm going to hold it nicely, right? Um, so, so, so let's talk about the size. So what does, how, how to decide like how, how to size it? What are the, okay, not, not even, yeah, what are the characteristics that kind of um, start affecting each other, the parameters of this pump that start affecting each other um, for the size? Um, and, and how are as average hand size is good? Okay, portability, and what does size? Okay, flow rate, we're kind of getting to it. What else does it affect? Filter, okay, so filter capability and flow rate, let's talk about it. So if we make it very large, what happens? The diameter, right? Okay, water capacity, okay. Ah, resistance, if we make it, if they make the diameter large, is the resistance more or less? Well, what do you mean depends? Yeah, well, less, what is force? Force the hand applies. F is MA, but that's not what we want here. Pressure times area, yeah, cool. So, so area goes up, stuff, you know, force goes up. Um, and then, and then, and then what changes the pressure that you have to push water at for getting a specific rate? What's it got to do, right? Well, why are you designing this? Uh, it's it's a, yeah, filter size and exit diameter, all of that, right? Like, so that's cool. So there's some geometric stuff that comes here, but filter size is really important. Um, so 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 let's say that, so what happens, you know, if you, if you have to get this small guy out, which is 0.02 microns, right? What are you gonna do with the filter, right? Go to have small filter, right? Like keep making it smaller, you put, carbon or whatever, right? You make it small. <clears throat> what happens to the force then if, if the pore diameter is really small? Yeah, it goes up. So it's kind of now you're starting to see the trade-off. So there's a trade-off on the diameter. You know, you can't make it too large, but also a hand should hold it. And if you make it too small, the rate is going to come down. Um, but also for the same rate, if I filter it too much, uh, force increases and you can figure that out. Uh, what's the average force a human hand can apply? Hmm. Got to do some research here. <laughs> but you know it, but you can't. Okay, I have five pounds, 10 to 5, yeah, maybe about 45 newtons. Okay, that's cool. Men, women, both. Very good question. Okay, that's good questions. These are all good questions. Okay. And, and an average person, right? Like you're going to target that average person. Yeah. If it's too hard to push, then you limit who can use it. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Uh, and, and the other question is, yeah, maybe if, if a kid, then maybe you have a way to change the filter. <laughs> so, or, or, you know, change the diameter of stuff. Um, 
yeah, all of that. Then, then you can say, why not use the leg? You know, it's kind of like too cumbersome. Uh, people have tried water pumping. So you kind of see that like there are contradictions to the design, uh, something as modest as a dimension and the pressure and the filtration and the strength. And then you talk about the teenager and then the woman, all of these things get coupled, right? Um, and, and, um, um, and that's important. Um, and uh, same thing with the filter size. So you kind of see um, all of these get coupled. How to determine size of the pump then? So you kind of do your numbers. Um, you figure out like, hey, I have a better way to filter than the other guy. Uh, I'm going to use it um, and so on, right? The challenge with lever and all that, right? Like this is easy to say, hard to do. But once you put a lever, it becomes cumbersome, more parts. And then you're going away, more things to pack. I mean, that's what the water pump with the handle is. I mean, uses the lever pump. Uh, pump water out of the ground uh, used often um, outside uh, and, and you know it's a, it's a simple principle but um, they don't use it so body weight instead of muscle strength I mean like yeah you don't want to you don't want to get into muscle strength and body weight too much you want to make it like the so-called easy to use is you know otherwise like you're jumping on your stapler right you guys have seen the stapler there are new kinds of staplers that you just um, it stores the energy and makes you push gradually and then it goes in. So, so it's sort of not even as, as um, you know, some are powered, but um, but in any case, we kind of move further. Um, so, yeah, so mechanisms like gears, cranks, all of that, like foot, all that kind of not, not too interesting in the sense that if you can avoid it, avoid it. Uh, ideally, you want to, the so-called idea of like reducing parts and assemble less parts, less suppliers, less cost, right? Less things that can go wrong. All of those are important, right? Okay. Okay, so we're gonna move on from here. So we're gonna kind of like close up now. Um, I'm gonna move on to this next thing um, is, yeah, okay. So you kind of know, if you know engineering and design and if you know how to make things and if you know how to mold things or, um, figure out the manufacturing process. You know, manufacturing is easy to say, hard to do. Um, it's it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of undersimplified, you know, taking something to production is hard, right? Like, so all of those are needed, but also like, so the pathogen sites, we have seen that these things have gotten smaller and smaller. Um, Escherichia coli, salmonella, cholera, and viruses, they get even smaller and you want to do the leaves. So you kind of look at this thing called the first need. Um, this is the competition, right? You kind of have to benchmark it. If you go to automotive companies, and they pretty much open up all the competitors thing and break it to pieces and figure out like, you know, who's capable of doing what. Um, you break it up and then, and then um, analyze it, right? So the first need, you kind of look at it. I was like 50 bucks, you know, weighing maybe 11 pounds. Then like you say, okay, you know, pump resistance is how much? Like five pounds, maybe uh, flow rate, maybe so many liters per minute. So you kind of like break it out. You see how it's made. Okay, it's using aluminum, plastic. Oh yeah, it does use a ceramic filter. How much does a replacement filter cost? You're gonna dig that up. Okay, maybe 30 bucks. You know, what's the capacity? Like, wow, okay, it's only like 100 gallons. Uh, cost to filter, like let's say, you'll say for cost to filter 500 gallons, how much, or liters or whatever, um, you're going to figure that out and you'll come up with some number. Or oh, it's going to cost you like 40 cents a gallon or 30 cents a gallon, right? So you figure all of this out. And oftentimes some of these, I mean, in something like this, the manufacturer is going to put those labels on the side of the product. Um, you're going to look at it and see whether they are true. Uh, and then you're going to look at how to clean the filter, right? So you have all these characteristics, you, you, you features, you compare your um, competition based on that. And then you'll say, okay, you know, um, first need also this inlet strainer and the tubing, you know, you want that to sort of go into, the, you don't want it to skim the water. You want to kind of do stuff with it, right? Do the same thing with this um, uh, pocket filter. You kind of look at uh, what they have, you know, maybe they have some PVC um, and then carbon uh, filter, right? Okay, 
260 bucks, maybe 20 pounds, it's heavy. Okay, so I have some possibility that I can play that middle ground, um, rated flow 0.7 liters per minute. You'll say, okay, pump resistance, 10 pounds. Okay, replacement filter cost, wow, $130. But these guys are selling for 260. You'll ask why, right? Well, <laughs> they have a product with the claim capacity of like 5,000 gallons, okay? And filter cleaning is very easy. You just take it, brush it, and put it back, okay? Um, and the filter lasts long, okay? That's why they price it high too, okay? So kind of look at all this and, and then you try to figure out like, okay, what advantage do I have in the market, right? Do I know how to do something better? So, so um, Sandy went after these kind of things and, you know, um, usual stuff, you have to satisfy, you get it all right. But he also had um, experience in figuring out, like, to make better body parts, had somebody uh, who knew CAD well. Um, and in those days, there was kind of order to do. These days, everybody has CAD and CAD is zero cost. You can get it free almost. Um, and then you, you, you sort of... Um, Go from there um, and and start figuring out the parameters for where you're going to go and uh, do it. Uh, he had some interesting uh, insights into it that you know he kind of used a micro filter because he had experience in that, which took off all the um, all the bigger pieces of stuff, and then he put charcoal later, which took the small stuff out. It's kind of clever idea at that time because. You know, he's actually optimizing, right? Basically, he's optimizing, saying, I can get the small things out, I can get the big things out too, but your forces and pressure are not going to be that high. So he kind of used this hybrid um, design to work around uh, the the, uh, the uh, issues the other guys had. And um, so they kind of target priced it, like in between, um, you know, around 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 the same as first need, but they... they um, um, Rate, rate uh, for filtering liters per minute was way higher. In fact, they were higher than the pocket filter too. They were one plus liters per minute, and and by doing that, uh, they were able to um, they were able to like carve their space out. Uh, pump resistance uh, was less less force, greater rate, right? And the pricing is similar. So construction was more solid. Replacement filter only twenty bucks, which is cheaper than both the other guys, right? and cost to filter um, was much, much lower. Uh, others were at like $0.3, uh, 30 cents per gallon, 50 cents per gallon. These guys were at 20 cents, right? Uh, and simple bottle brush for filter cleaning. And um, so, yeah, so they had this, uh, all of this like figured out and uh, came up with a successful product. Uh, so they, they sold a whole bunch of this. They had like, a, couple of million dollar sales um, in, the, in the first uh, couple of years. Of course, later on, they had competition. You guys came in and uh, things change. As you can see, um, in any product, you're going to have competition. Figure the next thing better and they'll do something else and they'll come up with something better. Um, that's the nature of the marketplace. And uh, even for us, something as simple as a filter. Okay, so we kind of are right on target an hour 20 minutes, I'm going to like kind of uh, stop it here. But basically the important things here are um, for you to have this um, overall sense of um, generally approaching stuff and, um, and, and, uh, uh, and, and kind of getting, getting the nitty gritty details of understanding the customer where we started with, uh, kind of structuring and understanding the needs and we kind of simplified it for, you know, just to an hour, 15 minutes. These guys probably took like a year to figure all of that out. And, um, you know, we, we, we in our own lab uh, spun off a company and commercialized um, educational robotics platform. And, you know, the production was way, way, way delayed. Um, and, and uh, you know, they went to uh, Shenzhen for a few weeks and ended up staying there for uh, a few months. So things go out of uh, hand oftentimes uh, in spite of, knowing what to do. That's the reality of um, physical products. But on the other hand, um, you know, from your perspective at this stage, you have a stratified understanding of some needs, clarifying them, verifying your assumptions, and then kind of creating a process for going forward to create um, 
prototypes of it, iterate, um, confirm, reduce risk, and then you know sort of um, take it take it into the next stage, right? So kind of uh, I want you to be eager to build your skills in uh, driving and understanding uh, the the uh, product process uh, angle for especially for new product design. Um, you know, it, 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 it becomes it becomes challenging, right? That's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, comments on this uh, session, uh, please chime in into the discussion board um, and, and you can say what happened after that. What is water filtration done after maybe your research on that? Um, but water is something complex. All the different countries and places, things uh, change uh, based on so many other factors uh, as well and and in some parts of the world water is is really hard to get um you know like in southern india in my city new york times had a front page um just a few months ago like drought like but we have we also get floods there and and so on so um and and it's going to become it's going to become um water like energy or it's going to become something really really important um as as we move forward and these days there's plastic in the water um, <laughs> that's something become become very important that it's starting to create um, uh, aqua um, kind of businesses for growing fish because fish have plastic these days. So you kind of look at what water has done to it or what plastic has done to water. So things go in circles. So I'm going to uh, stop at that. So thank you very much uh, for attending the session and uh, um, let's continue our discussions on the on the uh, uh, blackboard learning site. All set. So I'm going to buzz off from here. Have a good night. Thanks. Welcome. Thank you.